tragedy in the nation's capital. An elderly couple from Wisconsin struck and killed by lightning while celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary. Two others critically injured. What we're learning about exactly what happened. Just how dangerous is lightning? We'll run through the numbers and explain why the threat poses even greater than those with most other severe thunderstorm hazards. And we'll talk safety tips and tell you what you can do to stay safe when lightning threatens. Hi, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci in Washington, D.C., where we're observing a sad weekend here in the nation's capital. At least three people were killed by a lightning strike at Lafayette Park on Thursday, which is just north of the White House. Initially, four victims were taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Three have succumbed to those injuries so far. Among the deceased were elderly high school sweethearts from Wisconsin celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary. A 29-year-old male was also killed. The uniformed officers from the Secret Service and Park Police attempted CPR. Remember, lightning victims never retain a charge. There's no word on the fourth victim's condition as of now. This marks the first deaths in Washington, D.C. from a lightning strike since a 15-year-old was killed on May 17, 1991. He had been sheltering under a tree in St. Albans School in Northwest during a thunderstorm in middle of cross practice. Ten other people were injured by that strike. On June 13, 1998, 11 people were injured at a concert at RFK Stadium when lightning struck. There were no fatalities. More recently, two military personnel were injured on June 4, 2020. So that marks the 10th, 11th, and 12th lightning fatalities in the United States this year. On Tuesday, a 22-year-old was struck and killed in his tent while camping at Yellowstone National Park. That's why I'd like to seize this opportunity to discuss some lightning facts and myths, as well as address how you can protect yourself and others. For starters, what is lightning? Well, that bright spark you see is a stream of electrons. Believe it or not, most lightning bolts are only an inch or so thick, but they look way bigger and brighter. The purpose of lightning is to distribute charge vertically throughout the atmosphere. But how do charges originate to begin with? Let's talk about what makes a thunderstorm. Thunderstorms form when pockets of air ascend upwards high enough into the atmosphere to approach the tropopause, or the ceiling of the lower atmosphere. Those billowing white puffy clouds, called cumulonimbus, can tower up to 10 miles or more into the sky. As they release latent heat, their billows grow even more. Then you get something called tribal electrification. This means that water and ice rubbing against each other acquire different charges. In the middle of a thunderstorm where it's warmer, you have more water, which takes on a negative charge. Toward the top, that glaciated anvil where it's far below freezing, it's mostly ice, so you get a positive charge. Sometimes you get a lower positive charge that's brought and diffused the base of a storm, but we won't pay too much attention to that. Ordinarily, you have lightning strikes within the cloud between the middle negative and either positive, or you get cloud to ground flashes between the middle negative and the comparatively positive ground. So how does a lightning strike actually work? Once a charge builds, it can locally overwhelm the air's dielectric breakdown threshold. In other words, you have to have a strong enough field to get a spark to jump. That field strength has to be 3 megavolts or 3 million volts per meter. That's nuts. It's almost impossible to get a field that strong. Almost. But here's the thing. It only has to be done on a very minute local level. Once even the tiniest spark jumps even half an inch, it heats the air around it and lowers resistance, making it easier for that spark to continue growing and propagating. That's why you see lightning leap through the air in jagged fractal branches, each one perhaps a few hundred feet long. We call that a stepped leader. As the downward step leader approaches the ground, a bunch of tiny little tendrils of electricity called upward streamers reach upwards as if someone's waving their hand, like, pick me, pick me. Eventually, one of the upward streamers and the downward leader make a connection, and then the current flows through, like building a highway, two ends meeting, then the cars start driving. Each flicker you see is a pulse of current. Some lightning strikes might have 20 plus pulses. Other lightning strikes, called continuing current strikes, have fewer pulses, but they're longer in duration. That means the lightning heats the surface for longer, and therefore there's a better chance of it igniting a wildfire, because again, the surface can get more toasty. So what about thunder? Well, lightning is hot. It heats the air to 55,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or five times hotter than the surface of the sun. That results in serious expansion of the air, which creates an atmospheric shockwave of sorts that we hear as thunder. It travels at the speed of sound, obviously, 
speeds of about 343 meters per second or 767 miles per hour. That's why we can estimate the distance of a lightning strike based on when we hear the accompanying thunder. Every five seconds, it's about a mile. So now a couple facts about lightning. Number one, it can leap 10 or more miles from a storm into the clear air surrounding it. That's why if you can hear thunder, it sounds cliche, but you're close enough to be struck by lightning. Bolts from the blue or positive flash lightning shoot out the top of storms and can arc far distances. It might be sunny and nice with only distant rumbles, then suddenly a bolt crashes. Those bolts often prove deadly and catch people off guard. Another cool thing, there's a such thing as upward lightning. It's lightning that emanates from the ground and arcs outward and upward, often rippling along the underside of a storm. Oftentimes that lightning is of positive polarity. I've seen it a couple times, it's really cool. Many of those strikes are actually initiated by tall man-made objects like transmission towers or even wind turbines. Something else kind of cool, quite literally, you can get lightning during blizzards. And yes, thunder snow is dangerous. On January 25th, 1990, lightning struck a light pole during a thunder snowstorm in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That charge traveled through the snow and injured 11 people shoveling or pushing stranded motorists. Now, when we talk lightning safety, you want to be indoors or in a car, hands down. Nowhere else is safe. I'll say it again. Inside or in a car, nowhere else is safe. Inside a car and the charge will conduct itself through the exterior metal shell and into the ground. It has nothing to do with rubber tires. Indoors and you want to make sure you're not using anything with a wire attached or plumbing. Lightning can travel through the electrical system or the plumbing or the wiring, anything like that, through your home and can zap you. And you never, ever, ever want to be underneath a tree. If lightning strikes the tree, that charge could travel through the trunk and a side throw could get you, or it could move through the root system and injure you as well. You'd be better off either running indoors or crouching low to the ground and try to cover your head. 90% of people who are struck by lightning survive, but many require CPR immediately afterwards because they go into cardiac arrest. Men are struck four to five times more often as women. Overall fatalities are on a downward trend over the years, but you still want to make sure you're keeping abreast of weather forecasts. Again, that's the only way to stay safe. Not waiting until lightning threatens, but being indoors before it becomes an issue. The onus is on you to make sure your plans allow access to safe and immediate sheltering if lightning is expected to be a problem. One other thing too, you know, the National Weather Service issues severe thunderstorm warnings for wind or hail, but lightning doesn't have its own alert. That's why a third party weather app, just like my radar, can alert you in advance before lightning becomes a problem. In the meantime, my heart goes out to the victims of the strike here in DC. Of course, we'll be continuing to keep tabs on that and any thunderstorms that do crop up. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci, here in Washington, DC. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.